This video will teach you the basics of Smart Notebook. We'll show how to open the program, create your first file, and all of the basics needed to start presenting. I'm going to open the application. Usually, in your first few times of opening up your application, you will be presented with this. This shows all of the recent documents, shows a handful of examples, and quick links to other things to help you get started and get inspired. I don't want to see this again. I'm going to go ahead and click that off. Now you've got your first blank file. A few things about what you're seeing here. Here, I've got my slide. Here is the thumbnail view of that slide. We have some toolbars and some navigation. Uh, to get started so you can see what's really happening, I'm going to insert my first text box. So here is the text tool. You can see we've got a variety of other tools, which I'll go over in just a second. The text tool gives you an extra menu here. If I don't make any changes at all and just click in the field to start typing, it's going to default to these options. When I'm done, I can always go to the select tool, select that text, and make any changes I want to, like making the font bigger, changing it to a more interesting looking font, and changing the color. You can also make these changes before you start typing. Clicking on the text box, not typing yet, but going straight in to make these changes. I can now have my font ready to go without needing to make any extra changes. Here are some other tools that you're going to be seeing that we'll be playing around with. We talked about our select tool, our text tool, lines, we've got regular polygons and shapes, here's a collection of pens, this is an interesting one, it's a shape recognition pen. I have the fill tool, erase, and because I like using the pen so much, I have created some extra shortcuts for all of these pens, including highlighters, a creative pen, which we'll play around with and is really fun. If you don't see these on your tray, you can get them there, and I'll show you how to do that, but you can access all of them here by clicking on the pens. By clicking on the pens, again, it gives us all of these options in our extra menu that pops up. So if you don't see some of the same icons, you can still access them. Notice, as I started typing in some text, we started seeing it appear in miniature size over here. This is a thumbnail view of your page, and that's really handy when you create extra pages. You can see where you're at in your document. Let's move on to creating a shape. The first shape that I want to create is a star. You can see we've got all of these options. The drop-down menu leads to even more options, but I like this star. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. That's a really wonky looking star. There are some really nice features about inserting some of these images. If I want a star to stay looking like a star, as I create the star, I just hold down the control button and now it creates a star that keeps its aspect ratio. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this star. I don't want it there. It's not exactly what I wanted it to be. So I select it, drop down menu and delete. You can press delete on your keyboard or you can right click and delete. Lots of options to get rid of that. Now it's gone. This one, I like the star, but I really don't like the color. I wanted to change it. So now that the figure is already there, I can make any modifications I want, like making it a lime green star with a navy blue outline. And now it looks exactly the way I wanted it to. Let's practice with another shape. This time, I'm going to make a hexagon. But before I start creating that hexagon, I'm going to make those changes because I know that this hexagon, I want to be red on the inside. That's the fill color. And I want it to have a gray outline. We can also do fun things like changing the line style. I can change the thickness if I want it to be uh, bolder and stand out. I can change the border to dashed lines. And now I'm ready to create my perfect hexagon. You can also change the transparency. Now that I've got this figure, I'm going to go back and edit it. I'm going to change that transparency. So now this one, I didn't adjust that transparency. So that shape is hiding the text. This shape reveals that text. And maybe 
I want the text to be above the star. You can do that very simply. Choose your object and change the order. Our line tool is another favorite. We can draw all sorts of lines. It has lots of default option lines, um, but you can always change and make it exactly how you want it to be. So if I want a brown line that has an arrow on one end and a dot on the other, I want to make it thick enough that my students can see it from far across the room. And now I've been able to create that line. This is a lot to have on one page, so I think I'm ready for my next page. To add a new page to the document, I just click on this icon here to add a page. Now you can see I've got my fresh new blank page and I've got my thumbnail view to remind me where I'm at in my document. On this one, I'm going to add another shape. Let's go with the heart this time. And now that my heart is added, I can do some interesting things with it. Maybe I don't want it to keep on moving around, so I can lock it into place. Now I can't move it any longer. I'm going to unlock it and show you that you can also lock it into place in a lot of other ways. You can allow vertical move and horizontal move, allow any type of move, allow move and rotate. Um, we can also, because I really like the shape, it was perfect, I want this heart to turn out this perfect again next time, I can just clone that and it will create a copy. You can still use your traditional copy and paste, but the clone tool is a nice feature, especially when I want infinite clones. When I infinite clone this shape, now as I pull away, I will have infinite copies to spread all across my whole entire screen. This is especially useful when you've got math manipulatives on your screen and you need an infinite supply so that you can continue to model even those larger numbers. Now again, let's take a look at our two pages. I can navigate between them, looking here at the different thumbnails, and I can navigate between these pages using the arrows, which you'll also see up above. I'm ready for a new page. Or maybe I've forgotten that this is the end of my document and I press the over arrow to go to the right, it automatically creates a new page for me. Oh no, that's not what I meant to do. Easy fix, you can delete this page by having it selected and choosing the delete or my favorite, right click, delete the page. What I really meant to do is I loved how this page turned out so much that I want a second one so I can right click and I can clone the page. Now I've got an exact duplicate of that page and this page is going to be where I have some text. I'm going to add another text box. It's defaulting to these options again, so I'm going to go ahead and change those. And I notice as I'm doing this, I've got some other formatting features, your classic bold, italics, underline, your justifications, and different formatting features like subscripts and superscripts, and numbered lists and bulleted lists. So I'm going to add a bulleted list and say, happy Valentine's Day, you're the best. Again, you can see our thumbnail views, letting us know where we're at in our document. And then I remembered I need another page in between these two pages. So I come back here. I can always insert a blank page. Oh, that's not actually where I wanted it. I really wanted it here. Very simple to move and change the order of each of your pages. On this page, I'm going to show you the table feature. The table can be helpful, but it's not as fancy as other table features in other programs. Let's just create a small 2x3 table. It has resize options, but you're noticing that it just changes the whole size. It's not allowing me to change the rows and columns. You have to do that manually. And now I'm going to go ahead and add some text. Notice as I add the text, it's keeping the exact same formatting options as I left off, including that numbered list, which I'm not really too happy with. So, like I said, it's not our best feature here. Um, in order to change that, I'm going to have to go in and unselect that bulleted list and make some of those changes. Uh, I'm going to make those changes in advance now because it still thinks I want that bulleted list and I don't, and we're going to continue to type in. It still wants to keep on doing that bulleted list. So once again, probably not the best thing, but it will probably meet most of your needs for what you're trying to do. 
and I want to hide this because I don't want my students to know the answer and that's where this tool right here is going to come in. This is the screen shade. When I pop that on the screen it covers everything up. You can change the color of your screen shade but what's my favorite part is you can move the screen shade revealing only parts of your screen that you want to reveal. You can move it up and down, you can move it to the left and to the right, revealing only the parts of your screen that you want to reveal. When you're ready for that to be gone, you can either click on this icon again or you can click on the X. Notice this screen shade also appears in my thumbnail view. I'm ready for a new page and I'm going to practice my writing. Here I've got my pens. I also have some pens that have been shortcut and placed in my toolbar, but you can access all of your pens by clicking on this icon. You can just start writing and using your pen tools that come with your smart board, you can use them at the smart board. I'm doing this from my desk so you can see the style of writing. You can change by clicking on any one of these pre-selected options, but you can also make changes if you're looking for a specific color and maybe a specific thickness and even fun features like that dotted line. You can also play around, this is a fun one for me, the creative pen. With the creative pen, you've got a lot of these different options. The students really get a kick out of something like this. This is one of my favorites as well. And the shape recognition pen. If you're anything like me, you can go ahead and attempt as much as you want to draw a rectangle and it usually ends up a little bit skewampus. But with the shape recognition tool, it knew that that was going to be a rectangle and so it converted it into a very nice rectangle for me. So that's another really fun feature. Before I show you the next features, I want to remind you that these toolbars have been selected by me, so your tools might look different. If you can't find any of these features, you need to go to View, Toolbar Options, and customize. To customize these, these are all of my actions. That's this right here. I can choose to have the next page icon be here. Maybe instead of that, I really like the internet browser to be there, and so I just slide that into place. I really don't want that to be there, so I'm going to pull that back out, and looks like I'm not able to get that to move. I'm going to pull it all the way off, and then I'm just going to add it back in. There we go. That's exactly how I want it to be. Um, other options, you can have shortcuts for accessing full screen, um, accessing different view modes, um, other things that you're going to see, deleting, clearing ink. Um, the one that I want to show you though is screen capture. So that screen capture is already here on my toolbar. Make sure that that screen capture is on your toolbar too. That's going to be one of the things that I show you. The next tray here is our add-ons. So I'm going to go back into the toolbar options, customize, and again looking here at the add-ons. Um, the ones that matter to me are insert equation or write equation. So I make sure that the insert equation is on that tray and I've got that available right there. And the next one is the tools. Again, I have customized my tools to include my favorite things. So I have text shapes and I've got a lot of different pens already ready to go. What we're going to focus on right now is the equation editor. So again, the equation editor is in my add-ons and it looks like this where I can insert an equation. The reason why this is a helpful tool is because it has a lot of math formatted text already ready to go. I can create a fraction by clicking on this box and then I simply type in two thirds. The reason why that's important, if I don't use that equation editor and I try and do a text box, it still is trying to keep that old formatting, let me fix that. We're going to go making these changes on this before anything else. I no longer want that. We want just our normal. And I'm going to go to a nice, simple font. There we go. Now, when I create my text box and I try and do two thirds, it just leaves that slash instead of formatting it 
like it is supposed to be a fraction with a numerator and a denominator. And so using this equation editor is great for some of those things. You can also get your exponents, you've got your math formatted uh, text, like not just the less than or greater than, which you can access on your keyboard, but less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. We've got a lot of different um, symbols, not equal, um, approximate, our division symbol, which is really difficult to find. Um, and of course, fun things like infinity and pi and a lot of other fancy things that you probably aren't going to be needing at the level that we teach. Um, so insert your equation, um, make it interesting, make it an actual equation, including some fun things. In math class right now, we are talking about proportions. And so I can include an equal sign and a variable and show proportions or equivalent ratios. Uh, so make sure you know how to use that equation editor. The next tool that we're going to be talking about is this one right here, our screen capture. When you click on that, it does open up this dialog box. And I also want to point out that it opens up down here. So this is another thing that you can pin to your taskbar. Um, it's very similar to the snip tool, which I use regularly, the snip and sketch tool, the updated version of that. Both of those are pinned to my taskbar. And so this one that goes directly to notebook is also pinned directly to my taskbar. And just like those, um, those applications, you want to have whatever it is that you want to snip, whatever image you want already ready to go. So I've got this right here. I've got this really great mobile that I want to do a solve me puzzle. Um, and I just want to include it in my PowerPoint. And so with this on my screen and this already opened up here in my taskbar, I want to, these are the different options. You can have it take a screenshot, meaning the whole screen, um, just a window, a fancy fun little cutout. I'm just going to make it a nice square. And so now I can select what I want. Looks good. And now it gives me some options. Do I want to send it to a new page in SmartBook? Do something else? I can just copy it. It'll go to my clipboard so I can paste it later. I can save it as an image on my desktop. I can choose somewhere else that I want it to be saved. Um, I can send it to the current page. And I already have a blank page, so I'm going to go to send it to the current page. And I automatically copied and pasted it right there in my document. Once that's there, you can go ahead and change the size and uh, make that formatted the way that you want it to be. Um, it also has options of inserting your own images, a picture that's already saved, but I really like that feature of the basically the snipping tool built into Smart Notebook. Okay, we've covered a lot. The last thing that we need to talk about is now that we've got this great presentation, what do we do with it? Um, you can present it in a couple of different ways. One way, and this is what I usually do, I click on view full screen. I started here at the end. I can just go on back to the beginning and it creates this little bar up here that helps me navigate. And so here's my document. We're going to take some notes. There's the next page. When you're using your smart uh, board, you'll also see that you've got your ink tool. Ready. And that ink tool activates as soon as you pick up your pen from the smart board and get ready to write on it, it activates this ink tool. And so you can just tap on that and change those ink colors. It's not going to work for me because I am sitting back at my desk. And so it's thinking that I'm trying to just select things. But when you're up at your smart board and you select that, it will start drawing and you can annotate your existing document. Uh, go ahead and continue scrolling through. There's my screen shade so I can hide and reveal and you can continue clicking on through. You can change the view. Right now it is set to view the screen width. And so now I've changed it to view the slide height. And notice the difference here as I kind of go back and forth. It just depends on how much you want to be able to show. Because we do have a little bit wider screens, we have the option to show a little bit more, but it cuts off some of those edges. Um, another way that you can do this, now to exit this view, I just hit escape on my keyboard and I'm back to the main view where I can see the thumbnails and everything else. Um, I know that Janine likes to do this a little bit differently. She wants to keep access to all of her tools during her presentation. And so she will click on this auto hide. Again, this is going to hide all of our thumbnails. They're not gone forever. They are just hidden. And if I wanted to go back and see those again, I can just click on that icon where it's going to show those thumbnails, click outside of it, or just continue working. And it's going to hide that back up again. And again, I can change some of those views like, I want to view the entire page width, and so it's going to expand that a bit more. Um, maybe that's a little bit too wide. Maybe I need to adjust that. You can do that here, and you'll be able to see a little bit different uh, version of that.
So now you know how to present. And now the final, very last thing that we're going to talk about is what we can do with this. Um, like I said, I like to take notes on this. So we've annotated, we've taken all of these notes. My students have also taken notes and scribbled all over it. Um, and now I want for those students who are absent, I want them to be able to access this. So I file, I do want to save my document. So let's just save that. We'll call it save. And I also can export it as a PDF. And this gives me the format. You can change the way that it looks. Um, we can make it be a full page so that each page that prints out is another page in our document. You can do handout versions where it provides lines. So if you did this in advance and made these little handouts, your students have a place to take notes or you can just print the thumbnail view. Um, you can include borders and titles and change the header and the footer and all sorts of things like that. Um, you can even make it so that it prints landscape instead of portrait. And you have lots of different options. Um, so now I'm saving this as a PDF, that PDF is a portable document file, which means that I can access it anywhere. And it's really nice because now I can include links to these on my website and it makes it easy for students who don't have notebook software at home to still be able to view the notes. That is it. That is the basics of Smart Notebook. If you do nothing else but know this stuff, you are going to be successful in using this program. Thanks for watching. Have fun practicing and don't forget to submit your assignment.